Hulk, welcome to See You Mommy Connection. This is the second episode of a two-part series on barbecue. What a perfect way to start the summer. Get the grill ready, and you know, the last episode we talked about the debate between charcoal versus gas, but quite honestly, it really doesn't matter. You just do whatever your thing is. So if you have time, you know, enjoy the experience and the time it takes to use charcoal, and we gave you some tips on that. If you know you're home after a hard day's work, you wanna fire up the grill really quick, get something done in a half an hour, 40 minutes, the gas grill is definitely the way to go. And we talked about how now they have like the dual or even the triple grills that are available. So just know that if you're thinking about going out and purchasing a grill, you definitely have options. All right, so last episode, we talked about tips for purchasing a grill. We gave you some suggestions or pros and cons with gas versus charcoal. We also talked about, you know, food preparation, the safety of dealing with different types of meats and the core temperatures um, that you should focus on there. Well, one thing that you didn't get to do was really see the finished product. We put some ribs on the grill, we put some chicken on the grill. Well, with today's show, it's all about what does the end result look like and, you know, we're gonna actually taste it as well. So, with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and have Alan. We have on this episode, my husband, the grill master, um, Alan Polk. We also have Guy Nelson. He's the, the visiting griller here. Um, he, he's, also, he's also the gas propane griller also. Um, but what we'll do is we'll have Alan go to the grill. We'll zoom in on the chicken because we believe the chicken is done right now. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's on the grill. Wow. It looks great. You know, I wish we had smell-o-vision because it smells really good around here. Remember I talked about the last episode, how the aroma of barbecue is in the air and when that happens, how it makes me feel? Well, I'm having some childhood memories, family fun time memories, and it's smelling and looking really good. And Alan, you're going to move the chicken to the smoker section. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Well, so we can just keep everything warm um, and still uh, uh, build on flavor. All right. Look at those ribs. And you can actually hear like the juices hitting the charcoals and then you see the smoke. There's nothing like that smokiness when you're using a charcoal grill. Today's episode, we're gonna do several things. So we already have ribs and chicken on the grill. We're also going to do some turkey burgers. Guy has a recipe that he has just been bragging about um, with these turkey burgers. So he's gonna share that recipe with us and we'll get that on the grill. We're also going to do a recipe with broccoli, just a simple, little touch that we can do with broccoli and some onions and peppers but before we do that i want to talk about a little adventure that um we had a couple of weeks ago alan and i and our 18 month old actually took a trip to st louis for memorial day weekend and when we did that you know we did all of the normal touristy things like we went to the st louis zoo which was a lot of fun um, we were able to touch the stingrays and they had shark in the tank and things like that. Um, we also went to the Magic House, which is a um, children's museum. So a lot of and your fun. Favorite, the mall. <laughs> oh, and I, how, could I, how could I miss that, right? Went to two malls, okay. Went to two malls, but it was just, St. Louis is just a really nice, family friendly place to go. For the second year in a row, however, before we left, we had to make a special visit. And I'm not gonna spoil it. I want Alan to kind of tell us, where did we go for our special visit? Well, every year they have an event there. It's called... Um, Rib America Rib, Fest. Rib, Rib America. Um, and it's, um, I guess, restaurants, um, vendors, they come from all over, uh, Memphis, Kansas, you know, Texas. Texas. And they uh, set up these booths. Like, I'm going to say carnival, but it's just all food. And, it's uh, all food? Specifically, what type of food? Ribs. <laughs> Baked beans, coleslaw. It's, it's like barbecue <laughs> heaven, is what it is. 
and you buy your tickets and then you just, you know, you walk around, you sample as many ribs as you can or, you know, if you like a particular, you know, uh, place, whatever, you just eat, I mean, it's, it's good. Tell us about our, our, tell them about our meal this year. Um, we were there on Memorial Day and yeah. we had, it was like a triple meat Oh yeah, yeah, platter. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sausage, chicken, ribs. It was really good. It was really. We had cheese fries. <laughs> it, yeah, it, it was really. It, good. it was. It was supposed to be lunch, but it was more like a dinner. Yeah. The, the hardest thing though is trying to figure out which place you're going to eat at. I mean, you might take a half hour because you'll walk back and you know, <laughs> let's eat. No, wait a minute. Just figure it out. And so, but that's the hardest thing about it. But once you do figure out where you're going to eat, it's really good. And what made you pick the uh, booth that we selected this year? I had the most trophies. <laughs> <laughs> Make it simple. <laughs> yeah, and they do. They they display their trophies and everything. I mean, they have trophies. They have signs, and these are like huge, larger than life booths. I mean, it's not like just a table set up with a, a grill and things like that. I mean, there are multiple people um, at the vendor booths. They're working yeah, it. Like they, many restaurants. Yeah, it, it is. It really is like many restaurants. And so now. Whenever we go, and this is two years in a row, we've gone Memorial Day weekend, we absolutely have to visit the Rib America Fest before we come back home. So, if you're out in St. Louis next year, you know, go out there and visit. See all the options. You can get some ideas. They have barbecue sauces that they sell and things like that. But let's talk about barbecuing in Champaign-Urbana, all right? So with this episode, Guy is going to tell us about turkey burgers. So go ahead and kind of tell us how you came up with this recipe, what it's all about. Well, it used to be just regular hamburger, but, uh, you know, everybody's kind of going this healthy way. <laughs> so I, I, I couldn't do just a normal burger. I had to throw some stuff in it. So just over some trial and error more than anything, uh, I found a recipe that everybody seems to really like. Okay. Uh, in fact, like twice a week, I'll ask, you know, what do you guys want for dinner? And they're like, turkey burgers! They, wow. They, yeah, they, they really like them. So um, it's it's really nothing that special. There's a few seasons in here I don't really talk about, but yeah, just, just, some, just just some, some small ones, nothing real major. But um, actually, I use breadcrumbs to start it off with. Okay. Because the breadcrumbs, the big deal with that is is that the turkey is, is a really wet meat. Mm. Okay, mm -hmm. and if you don't put something in there, and I have no measurements for this, I really don't. I mean, I, okay. I just throw some in there, um, and if so, it doesn't feel quite right, then I throw some more in. So, how much turkey did you start out with? I've actually got just a little over three pounds of turkey. Okay, just a little over three pounds of turkey, um, and then then I just kind of start experimenting from there a little bit. I throw in some onion powder, and again, you know, I don't I don't buy the expensive brands of this stuff. Mm -hmm. I just don't. I use so much of it that I don't. I don't know. Okay, now this one actually has uh, some of the secret seasonings in it that, that I can't talk a whole lot about. Did you make up those seasonings yes. yourself and put it in yes. the bottle? Yes, that, those are all, yeah, so you can see that there's a lot of different stuff in there. I there's bet a, you I can look at that container and tell you what's in it. I bet you can. There you go. You, you enjoy it for a few minutes while I'm putting some more seasonings in. You have a good time. But but I don't I don't skimp. I mean, you just, just keep throwing stuff in, and then I top it off throwing in with little major seasonings. But I always what, add what's all the last season? Nature season. Oh, tell us about that. I never use it. You never use nature yeah, season? I never it's use got it. pepper, it's got celery, it's got onion, it's got a little bit of everything in it. Okay. Uh, it's just it's just a great flavor enhancer. For me anyway, it brings uh -huh. a lot of flavor out. I use it in, you know, chicken and noodles, I use it in everything. Okay. So uh, but I always make sure that I do all my seasonings first before mm -hmm. I ever touch the meat. That way my bottles don't ever get contaminated. Mm. And and if I if I end up and decide that I'm gonna be mixing a little bit more, I'll change gloves out. Okay. So, uh, this is another little part of it. They are teriyaki turkey burgers. So, oh. I've got a special teriyaki sauce that I get up and go in. Huh. And it is it is great. Right. So I'll start with that. If I can throw it over there. Um, I throw just a little bit of this in here. And then during the growing process. Like, what would you estimate a little bit? You know, is? I, I would say I would say that's probably at least two teaspoons. Sometimes I'll even throw some steak sauce in there. Mm. Believe it or not. Mm -hmm. Throw a little steak sauce in, uh, bourbon, mix it up. Mix okay. it up, it tastes just a little different each time. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, then I just go at it. Okay. 
Okay. Just get this going. Let me ask you a question. Um, thinking about cooking turkey, ground turkey versus ground beef, do you think that when you're seasoning it, you use more or less seasoning with the turkey? I use a little more with the turkey than I okay. do with ground beef. On the ground okay. beef, generally I don't mix it up like this. Uh, one of the things that happens with this is you're cooking it with the breadcrumbs and things like that is that uh, it raises. Mm. It raises. So mm -hmm. you have to be a little bit <laughs> careful how thick you make the burgers and stuff. Okay. Um, but burgers, I put all my seasoning just on the outside, and with the turkey, I mix it all through. Okay. What the other? Raises, I need that one. Oh, you see, I wasn't gonna bring it up. Okay, but he it's like it's like when you're when you're looking at those court T V shows and stuff like that, you know, once one of the attorneys opens the door, then the other side can start to ask questions about it. And he did it. So I, I just wanna I just wanna make that point. I was not even gonna mention it, but now that he's put it out there, Alan just said, Oh, well if it raises he needs to learn more about that. Well, let me just tell you, I always tease him because he can grill some ribs. He can grill some chicken. He can even grill turkey and probably everything else that you can imagine. But he's still working on the burgers. His burgers actually turn out to be Smurf burgers. They, they shrink. <laughs> Poke a hole in the middle. Poke a hole in the middle. Really? Yeah. Yeah, and then they, they, they don't shrink near as much for some yeah. reason, yeah, all, because all the grease gets pushed from the outside in, uh -huh. right, because everything's right in the center. So if you poke a hole in the center of that burger all the way through, uh -huh. it, it, it doesn't shrink down near as much. There you go. Yeah. See, that's now, why I don't, you I don't watch have to do the Imani Connection. I don't have to do it with this. All right. So there you go, no more Smurf burgers. Right? <laughs> then I just pick it up, and like I say, I like it to be just a little sticky. Okay. See how it's got a little stickiness to it? Mm -hmm. It's without being rolled in. So, and I just make a ball. And the turkey doesn't stay together like the hamburger does. That's mm -hmm. why, like I said, it's got to be sticky because yeah. once you throw it on the grill, sometimes it'll, how's that? Okay. All right. If I can get you to open the grill, yep. I'll go ahead and throw this one on there. Those ribs look really good. They smell great. And Alan, what are you using there? I know we introduced it in the last episode. What are you doing? I'm just putting a secret sauce. <laughs> Actually, you make it, uh, so I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, it is It is a secret, um, I don't know if you would call it a base or what, but it's, it's a, I will tell you that it's an extra virgin olive oil, some vinegar, and some seasonings that we use, but I can't tell you much more than that. But you can, you can make your own variation. I actually got it. It's something that my dad's side of the family Did you want a does. Um, I want a big one. You want a big one? All right. Yeah. Um, it's something that my dad's side of the family does, and I have just came up with my own variation of it, and we use it. We use it on chicken, and today we're actually trying it on ribs. How's it looking over there, Al? Yeah, good. As we're getting the turkey burgers prepared, and we're also flipping the ribs, let's talk about um, the things that you guys use for marinades, seasonings, what what things do you use with certain types of meat? Anything I can get my hands on. Okay. All right. Uh, I've even taken like uh, a chicken white gravy uh -huh. and just taken the dry mix and put it into the turkey. Really? Yeah, I've done that a couple times. Uh -huh. uh, you know, so so I, I just try anything that's in the fridge or look up in the cupboards if I see something or walk down the seasoning aisle if I see something new. I just try it. Okay. And that's like the adventure of cooking. It doesn't matter if you're in the kitchen doing something, preparing it for your family, or if you're out on the grill, experimenting is like the best type of cooking. So you just throw some things together, as long as you can remember what your recipe is, because if it's really good, you're probably gonna wanna make it more than once. So keep that in mind. Watch your way. What else, um, Alan, what else do you use for seasonings? Or have you ever used marinades or glazes? No, I was like, no. I mean, mine's pretty simple. Uh-huh. You know, 
Seasoning salt, salt and pepper. Um, what about like when you're smoking and stuff? What do you do for like brines? You ever brine your turkeys and stuff all night? Um, well, you know, well, we did a turkey one year a few years back, and um, it took me 16 hours to do that turkey. <laughs> How big a bird was it? It was, um, I don't remember. Like 20, 20 some pounds? It was about 21 pounds, I wow. believe. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I even went to bed and got back up the next morning yeah. and checked on it, yeah. you know, but I, I, I based it with butter mm -hmm. every 30 minutes. Really? And it, yeah, it came out perfect. And it was actually, wasn't it for Thanksgiving? Yeah. It was a, yeah. it was a big Thanksgiving turkey. It was a um, turkey that we shared with the rest of the family. It was juicy. It was tender. It was definitely buttery. Yeah. I mean, he smoky. cut into it. Yeah, but Dad cut into it, and the butter just oozed. Just oozed <laughs> yeah. out. So, I mean, it was, it was hard work, but it was well worth it. What other things have you guys put on the grill? Uh, uh, juice. Well. I didn't do it on the grill, I put smoky juice, okay. duck. Cornish hands um, are really good. Yeah. Uh, and we crispy. haven't done that in a while. Yeah. Bacon. Um, we haven't did so fish I haven't really. Oh now, guy. I do fish. I've I've got I've got one that, that my boys just Yeah. We we love it and, and I suppose it's the wrong way to go about it, but it's so fun. Mm -hmm. We uh we cover the grill with some aluminum foil. And in fact, I'm getting ready to do one of my vegetables now, the way that I do it, uh, when we're doing this. We, we stand around the grill, all of us stand around the grill, and we talk about fishing and stuff, and I'll throw mm -hmm. bass that we've just caught that day. I'll throw bass on the grill, seasoned mm -hmm. up, and some butter. Uh, same seasonings, I use the same seasoning bottle on a lot of stuff that we do. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll sit around and do that, and we'll make little aluminum foil bowls, okay. melt butter, we'll dip crab meat in it, Mm -hmm. Just stand around eating the crab meat while we're uh, while we're cooking the vegetables mm -hmm. and cooking the bass yeah. and stuff. It's it's just it's a lot of fun. It's our favorite cookout. Okay, let me ask you guys. Is that on our propane or is that grill? That's propane. Grill. Yeah, because <laughs> we can get it ready like you know right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> See, the know, debate never know. ends. Just it never know. ends. <laughs> but before we get to the vegetables and the bowls that you're going to teach us to make, um, let's talk about like using other things. So we know that with a charcoal grill, you use charcoal. And first, I'd like to talk about, like, is there any uh, technique for how you put the charcoals in the grill? Um, I mean, I know some people, they like yeah, they, the pyramid. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, even the back of the bag, charcoal, it shows you make a pyramid. You know, I've tried it. I don't like it, so I don't use it. Um, but a lot of folks do. You know, you build your pyramid, and then when it heats up, you know, flames up, you knock it over, and then your coals are ready, you know. But I don't do it that way. What do you do? I just lay mine flat, add the um, the uh, the lyre fluid, let it soak for maybe like five minutes, you know, and then add some more lyre fluid again, let it soak another five minutes, and then just another um, layer of lyre fluid, <laughs> and then light them up. So. How much does it cost you each time you grill? <laughs> but we're usually so, doing a lot of meat. Yeah, it's we're a usually, lot of meat. And yeah. You know, I got to usually keep my coals, you know, it's a lot of coals. So I mean, I'm usually queuing for like, you know, eight, nine hours, you know, so you got okay. to have a lot of coals for that. And, and um, you, you can actually, you know, and then while you're cooking, you can add um, wood chunks okay. to flavor, you know, there's different types, you know, at first there was just hickory, 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 now the mesquite. Right. You even have apple now. Yep, I use apple, yeah. cherry, yeah. Yeah. cherry. Oh wow. And yeah. you can either soak them um, in cactus juice um, <laughs> or you can do them dry. Uh, I don't use them anymore because I think it kills the colds. But yeah. um, I'm sure if you use them, pro you, you can't Not, can use them. Pro you yep, I do. I've got actually a little smoker box. Okay. And uh, I actually will even soak mine in Mountain Dew. Oh. Yeah, I'll throw them out and do it on them and, and let them soak for, mm -hmm. you know, 20, 30 minutes or something like that. And then it, it, it actually adds kind of a sweet, smoky flavor. Huh. Even. Yeah. All right, so there you have it. I mean, some great tips to help you this summer barbecue season. All right, so Guy, the next thing that we're going to focus on. So let me just remind everyone, we have chicken on the grill. We have ribs on the grill. We just put some turkey burgers on the grill. Teriyaki turkey burgers, mind you, on the grill. So what's next? Uh, well, I'm going to just make my little vegetable cooking bowls. All it's, right. It's nothing spectacular. The reason I started doing it this way was it's easier. Okay. It's just easier. I don't have as much cleanup at the end. I, mm -hmm. and, and in fact, even if we have leftovers, we just roll them up in it and put them in the fridge. We're good. All right. So 
All right, so all so, I do, I, I start with, depending on, on how good of aluminum foil you have, I'll go with two, sometimes three, uh, okay. three layers of aluminum foil. And just lay out, eh, what, a foot and a half, something like that. Okay. And then I fold my edge all the way around. And Al, you're going to make one of these. Okay, so I just pulled, pulled my edge all the way around to start with. Let's go right ahead. Not only makes it look nice, but it keeps them all together. Okay. <laughs> so then after I get it folded, I'll kind of start rolling up the edges just a little bit. you got to kind of work at this. It actually ends up more like an oval than a, than a rectangle. Okay. But I'll start rolling up my edges into itself. Kind of rolling up into itself just a little bit. And it doesn't have to be great, it doesn't have to be super deep. Mm -hmm. But if you don't roll it up, the butter will leak off the edges. Okay. And then you get flare up and... Okay. I guess you just fold the corner. Yep, just fold it in. Yep, and then just start rolling. Once you get all the corners folded. And what we're going to do is, we have two bowls that we're making that we're going to put on the grill. One bowl is going to be a bowl of broccoli. The other bowl, we have some green pepper, red pepper, and some onions. And then Guy will tell us in just a little bit about the seasonings and the butter that we're gonna put on both of those. So it doesn't have to be too deep? No, it doesn't have to okay. be real deep. Uh, the only thing you're really doing is, is just, just creating a place so it doesn't roll off real easy when you're stirring it. Okay. And then a place to hold the butter so it doesn't leak down on the grill. Okay. That's it. All right. How you doing over there, Mr. Polk? I'm doing pretty good, I guess. Yeah. Looks good. good to me. <laughs> Roll in the corners, stand up the sides, good to go. Now, one thing I did learn is uh, don't put the vegetables in before you put it on the grill. Oh. It's not that stable. Okay. <laughs> All right. That so, makes sense. Let me just do a recap. So far, we have chicken on the grill, we have some ribs on the grill, we even played around with some Texas toast and that turned out really nice. Um, Guy shared his recipe for teriyaki turkey burgers. Those are on the grill. We're going to take a look in just a moment because they're smelling really good. As we transition over to the grill again, what we're going to do is we need something else to eat with those turkey burgers and the ribs and the chicken. So Guy is going to share with us some simple tips on how to cook some broccoli on the grill. And Alan will go ahead and throw on some red peppers, green peppers, and onions. So guys, let's go ahead and check out those turkey burgers. Wow. Those things are looking great. Wow. And you they didn't are. see us put these on the grill, but we also have some Hinkle sausages. They're Polish sausage. They're on the grill as well. So you made the bowls. Made the bowls. Very simple to do yep. with foil. Yep. Okay. Easy clean up afterwards. All right. That's what it's, that's what it's all about with me. <laughs> Throw some broccoli on there. And you're just kind of spreading them just almost spread them out. on a single yeah, layer. Almost single layer. Okay. Yeah. That way, you know, it's easier to keep track of the ones that, that might burn a little bit. Okay. You know. And approximately how long are you gonna keep those on the grill, do you think? <clears throat> those will be on there ten to fifteen minutes generally. Okay. Ten to fifteen minutes. Okay. Depends on how what kind of texture you like with them. Mm-hmm. You know? Might be a little longer though since it's charcoal. Yeah, it might be a little longer <laughs> since it's charcoal. <laughs> Might not taste the same either. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. So let me give you some barbecue facts. Um, Lexington, North Carolina is known as the barbecue capital of the world. Did you know that? Um, there's also some trivia that says that four out of five households actually have a grill in the home. Um, and unfortunately, the majority of them use gas. Um, the other thing to note is that they actually, they, they cook out on the grill about four to five times a month. And I'm getting some, I'm getting some looks, so I'll take did that guys, back. Did you guys, I'll did take you guys that want, back. listen, did you guys it's, want some of these turkey burgers or not? <laughs> huh? We do, we do. No, but seriously, it really doesn't matter if you're using gas or you're going to use charcoal when it comes down to it. It's, you know, what is the food going to taste like? And looking at this food on the grill right now, the sausages are looking really good. The turkey burgers, there are only three on the grill right now. And exactly. there are more than that here on the production crew. So I think we're going to have Secret some uh, on everything. fighting over on the everything. turkey burgers. 
So we used butter and approximately how much butter? You know, I used about a half a stick between the two of them. It all depends. Uh, you know, I kind of like, I, I throw it on there and I start watching it, see mm -hmm. how much is, is it soaking in a lot or am I getting any burn or anything like that. So. Half a stick total. Total. Okay, between so the two. Yeah, about a quarter stick on each. Okay. And what are you doing right now? I am, I, I'm putting that, that teriyaki sauce on there. One thing I want to say about the teriyaki sauce is that, uh, you know, the thicker the better. Okay. The thicker the better because as you pour it on here, you've got some of those, some of them out there, you pour them on, it's like water. All right. You know, it's just like water. This has got a little bit of thickness to it, a little consistency. And you said you always use this sauce. Tell I us about it. I always use this sauce. It's, it is, uh, I actually just started using this sauce mm -hmm. in um, probably around February. Okay. Would have been around February. I picked up the, the, the first bottle of it and uh, up in Galena. So it's local to Illinois? Yep, local to Illinois. It's okay. in Galena and they've got a uh, every kind of sauce, hot sauce, sweet sauce, jam, jelly, everything you can think about right up there in Galena. This smells amazing. really good. It smells really good. But I just make sure I get all the edges on it. And I see that you have some thermometers here. Yes. Can you kind of tell us about those and when you would use them? Well, I'm going to close that for just a second so my butter will start melting. Um, I've got, uh, again, I've got three different types here. I've got my, your standard metal one. This is one that if I'm going to do smoking, um, like pulled pork or something like that, I'll throw this in. you got to make sure that you, you stay away from the bone because the bone will heat up before the meat does. Mm -hmm. So throw this in, and uh, that's just kind of my, I go by this one. It gives me an idea when I'm getting close. Okay. Then I've got, again, if it's raining, <laughs> I use my wireless. Okay. <laughs> use the wireless one. Uh, this is great, uh, again, when it comes to, to meat cooking, I don't really trust just one thermometer. A lot of it's look, mm -hmm. but I test it uh, a couple different times because if it's just if it's a few degrees difference, even the pulled pork won't pull. Okay. So then I've just got my standard one. This has got a little magnet on the back, and most of these have uh, where it says you the know minimum pork, required. minimum mm -hmm. required for for temperatures, and those are again minimum requirements. Okay. Okay. All right. Can we take another look? Yes, we can. I think we got really close. Wow. And you just kind of mix it up. Yep, a I just bit. kind of mix it up a little bit. Make sure some butter gets on a little bit of everything. And those are already starting to green up really good. Those are looking great. Mm. Yeah, it does look good. It does look, and it smells so good. And it's healthy. Yeah, and it actually is pretty pretty healthy. It's not too bad. I mean, okay. a little bit of better. So I tell you what, let's throw some buns on here real quick. All right. So the last episode we did the Texas toast, and we gave you the perfect tips for making sure that Texas toast turns out just right. So with this, we're doing turkey burgers. So we're gonna go ahead and get some buns on the grill. You eat that burger straight up, or you want a bun? I'm, I'm gonna go with the bun. You're going with the bun? Yeah. All right. I actually get one. We are gonna have to put more on the grill. We have to feed the crew, so. All right. All right, I have a few questions for you guys, okay? And we're gonna do like a lightning round of questions. So when I ask the question, I just want you to blurt out your answer, all right? So the first question is, sauce while barbecuing or after? After. Dirty. <laughs> and after. <laughs> charcoal or gas? Gas. Charcoal. Okay. <laughs> Today, anyway. <laughs> Wood chips or not? No. No. Oh, wow. No. Okay. When it comes to sauce, spicy or sweet? Spicy. I like both sweet with a little hint of spicy. Yeah. Yeah. Best of both worlds. Okay, so I'm there you go. <laughs> really, what these two episodes were all about is introducing you to some easy, helpful tips that you could use to make the best out of this summer. When you think about barbecue, there are just certain things that come to mind. And it doesn't matter whether you're the charcoal griller or the gas griller you can incorporate these tips and suggestions into what you do. 
So, the first episode kicked off Father's Day. This is just a continuation of that. But again, keep in mind that this is CU Mommy Connection. So for you mommies out there who enjoy grilling as well, I hope that you found some helpful suggestions and tips. This is a family-oriented show, and we hope that you come away with some things that you can do to make the most out of your family gatherings. So as we take the turkey burger off the grill, wow, look at that. How good is that? We have some peppers and onions that you can throw on top of this. If you want it to, you can throw some cheese on it. Yep, we throw, I threw pepper jack cheese on all it. Right. All kinds of stuff. You name it. And it the on. sausage, you can tell when a Polish is ready to come off the grill because it starts, the skin gets crispy, it starts to break a little bit. You see the juices seared into the meat. Just the perfect day for a barbecue gathering. With that being said, I just want to remind you that you can always tune in to See You Mommy Connection every Sunday evening at 8.30 p.m. Central. This is Marie Polk with Master Griller, Alan Polk, and with King of the Gas Grilling, Guy Nelson. I want to thank them for joining me today. Thanks for thank having you guys. Yeah, thank you. I want to thank you for tuning in this evening. Remember, you can always tune in to See You Mommy Connection right here on UPTV Channel 6. Thank you, good night, and God bless.